Hi guys, I'm Tyler London, Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities, and I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. I'm recording this on Friday, July 1, uh, just before the market opens. It is almost 9 o'clock. Um, so the market, the broad market is off around 3% this week. We had, you know, last week a roughly 6% rally off of what hopefully is the low of around 36, 37 here on the S&P 500. You can see it down here. Um, that was Thursday and Friday. So we rallied about 6%. This week we've given about half of that back. We'll see if that's the low, but uh, for now that's kind of what we're working with. Uh, of course, yesterday we closed out the first half of 2022. Pretty horrible half. Um, the S&P 500 is down around 21% year to date. That's the worst first half of the year since 1970. Small caps are down around 20%. Here's a look at the S&P 600 index. And moving on to the NASDAQ, it has been even worse. NASDAQ is down almost 30% so far this year. And it's not just here in the U.S. Of course, things overseas are not going that well either. Uh, the MSCI World Stocks Index had the worst start to the year since 1990. Um, of course, it's inflation, it's oil prices, the uh, Ukraine-Russia conflict. Europe is, uh, you know, not doing that great, and that is all showing up um, in the in the world market. So, uh, moving on to Treasuries, those have also been obliterated. I saw a note this morning from Deutsche Bank, uh, who estimates that the first half's performance was the worst since 1788. Um, the flip side to all this kind of gloom and doom is that uh, recession risks have gone up, and now the market is trying to balance out potentially slower growth with maybe a less hawkish Fed. Uh, we have also seen some potential easing of supply chain challenges. So it is possible that inflation has peaked, supply chain uh, issues will get better, and um, maybe the market can turn around. Uh, yields and crude oil have both backed off of their highs lately, so crude is now roughly flat over the last week, uh, but down to around 108, so that's down from over 120 a couple of weeks ago. And then the 10 year, 10 year yield is down around 15 basis points this week. So it's now just below 3%, you can see it here. Um, and that, again, is sort of a, a signal that the market might be pricing in a less aggressive Fed uh, going forward. But of course, we'll have to see. Let's go back to the small cap chart here for a sec. Uh, so small caps, of course, area of focus of mine. Um, the index has traded at a discount now to large caps for an insane amount of time, almost 100 weeks. So the small cap forward PE is around 11.3 now. It's extremely cheap, uh, while the large cap forward PE is around 15.9. Uh, that discount, that the length of this discount it hasn't existed for over 20 years. We have to go back to the beginning um, around the, the dot-com bubble, 2000, 2002. Um, for that. And of course, uh, you know, PE ratios are a function of price, which we can see obviously in the index, um, as well as forward earnings estimates, which are a little bit more nuanced. Up until a couple of weeks ago, analysts have seemed possibly over enthusiastic with their forward earnings estimates, both in large and small caps. Um, so those have begun to get reeled in a little bit lately. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how valuations evolve uh, as we go into the Q2 earnings season, which we'll pick up later this month. Um, July is going to be just a really, really interesting month because, of course, we have the earnings uh, season beginning, but also there's a lot of uh, economic data that's going to come out this meaningful as well as another FOMC meeting. So let's talk quickly about the calendar there. So um, oh, and in addition, uh, we unofficially have a recession. The Atlanta Fed's GDP model was revised yesterday morning, um, showing by their estimate negative 1% growth in the second quarter. That was down from an estimate of 0.3% previously. Uh, the update came after yesterday's release of the May personal income and consumption data, which was also revised down. So again, this just feeds into all signs pointing towards slower growth, slower consumer spending 
Uh, we will get another update from the GDP Now model today. Um, and of course, it is just an estimate. The official first read of second quarter GDP comes out later in the month on July 28th. Before we get to that, we will receive the June CPI data, so the inflation data on July 17th. And then the FOMC has another meeting from July 26th to 27th. The market is currently giving an 83% chance of a 75 basis point hike, which would push us into the seven, or I'm sorry, the two and a quarter to two and a half percent range. Kind of interesting. I looked out into next year to see um, what the market is pricing in. And it looks like, as far as you know, current estimates, current projections, uh, the market is looking for around uh, three and a quarter to three and a half percent uh, to end the year, and staying about even at that rate through middle of next year. So again, that just ties back to what I was saying earlier about the market sort of trying to juggle uh, recession risk with potentially a less aggressive Fed. So we'll see how that all evolves. Um, but let's move on to stocks right now. I have four for you. Of course, it is not a strong market. Uh, so, you know, take these with a grain of salt, but we're trying to spread things around, look for opportunities in different sectors and highlight some of those for you. So first up here, uh, let's get through the index charts. Okay. Pfizer. Large company, obviously market cap, almost 300 billion. Uh, we all know what Pfizer does. Really the strategy here uh, and why it's an interesting stock is um, they have the COVID uh, vaccine and antiviral pill franchise, which are compelling in and of themselves, but also the company is generating a lot of cash and usually using that cash to invest in other you know, pipeline opportunities that really could pay dividends down the road. So to make an analogy, we kind of think back to, you know, Microsoft years and years ago um, when it was investing in its cloud platform in Azure, uh, making the switch to Microsoft 365. And all of that was kind of going on. It took a while to to gather momentum. Uh, then we move forward three, four years from that point and Microsoft has this terrific franchise, uh, which is really, really strong. So we look at Pfizer, sort of making these investments now, laying the groundwork. Hopefully a number of these potential treatments are gonna hit big uh, and take the stock onto new highs in the coming years. So again, that's just an analogy. Um, clearly very different businesses between Microsoft and Pfizer, but investing now for the future. Uh, and it has some compelling stuff going on. So it picked up Arena Pharmaceuticals, made that acquisition, uh, which brought in potential treatments for IBS, Crohn's, and a number of other things. Uh, and then we heard a couple of weeks ago, Pfizer has made an investment in a company uh, that has a potential vaccine for Lyme disease, uh, which hits close to home here because of all the tick-borne illnesses in Rhode Island uh, and the Northeast. So we'd like to see that. Of course, and there's a lot of other things going on. But again, big picture, Pfizer laying the groundwork uh, for significant franchises down the road. Moving on to Grocery Outlet Holdings. So this is a company that came public in 2019, market cap of $4 billion. I mean, it's a basic story. It's discount grocery stores. Of course, heading into a recession, slower economy. Consumers are buying more of what they need, less of what they want. Uh, and that feeds right into a company like Grocery Outlet. As you can see, the stock has done well. Um, so if you're looking for a real basic play, uh, potential opportunity there. More exciting, more interesting stock is GitLab, a uh, market cap of 7.9 billion, came public in 2021. So they provide an end-to-end -end DevOps platform that functions as a system of record for source code. Basically, it's a platform for teams of developers to create and tweak software applications. Been looking through IT spending projections, uh, continue, you know, continuing to look for pretty strong IT budgets around things like digital transformation, cloud, software spending. All of that feeds into GitLab's business. Clearly, stock is well off of its highs from last year 
um, came public at 77. It's a $53 stock right now. But really what we're looking at here is the lows from around um, May 12 and a series of higher highs and higher lows over the last, call it month and a half. So certainly some encouraging progress there from GitLab. And then last but not least is Inspire Medical. Uh, this is a med tech company that has solutions to manage sleep apnea. We're not talking about masks and hoses here. It is an implanted device, so pretty clean as far as you know when, when people are sleeping, moving about their day. They're not dealing with all those tethers and all that stuff that kind of seem to, you know, define sleep apnea treatments. Um, it, Inspire has a market cap of five billion, and as you can see, the stock recently has come off of its lows. Also, just like GitLab, we're looking at around May five, May 10, 12, somewhere in there for a potential bottom. The price here was one forty three at that point. Uh, we're looking at one eighty two right now. And you know, you go back and you can see uh, there has been some support previously going all the way back to uh, over a year ago for Inspire. But they're doing a lot of interesting things in terms of growing the sales force, um, new territories, just sort of operational things. Uh, and they did a lot of work during the pandemic uh, to set the stage for growing the business. And I think that this could be an opportunity uh, to pick up a pretty high quality med tech stock um, that has sort of a unique uh, way to play the sleep apnea market. Anyway, that's Inspire, and that is it for today. Of course, we have uh, the 4th of July holiday coming up. I hope you have a nice weekend, nice long weekend with family and friends, and we will see you next week. Take care.